Mm, all right. Oh, uh, let's close see. that window. Yep. Put on your happy faces. Close all the bad things you have. We're gonna do a show now. Well, that was stream up. I'll just close them. Oh, uh, well. Uh, okay. It Dude. might come back on. Who knows? Probably not. Oh, oh well. All right. Let me pull up the show notes. Close all Diablo browsers, I guess. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the uh, Ultron guy came in two days before we were talking about it. I was like, how did you? You know what? Never mind. <laughs> I'm a wizard. <clears throat> I is still absent in the show notes. <clears throat> I went to what? Oh, oh, that was from the. Yeah, that was from the. Uh, when I thought it was going to be the whole show was going to be on Tuesday or whatnot. Uh, where did I have a cool thing? Oh, crap. Better be quick. I had something. And, uh, Scope, if you could add in uh, Ingrid's cool thing, find the link for that, that'd be great. Alright, let's go ahead and start this then. Let's start in episode 173. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This welcome. Is, uh, welcome. Welcome. It's friendly here. More friends. Uh, Lots well, of friends. Come be our friend here at uh, Brodyville Podcast. This is episode 173, recorded on June, February, March, May 2nd, 2015. I am your host, Apple Cider. Glad Hi. to have you. Sandy here is being particularly uh, helpful today. I'm helping. <laughs> he sure is. In the, we're, we don't have another uh, Glimmer episode yet, but you're you're definitely in in the in the right place for it. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, we're all gonna get equalized. Uh, also getting equalized this week is going to be five iron. Huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're next in line. Oh man. I mean, it's, listen, we're all going to have to, you know, accept that this is our new fate. Handicapper general coming through. Yeah, absolutely. The scope's also going to get handicapped. And he left. Yeah, typical. <laughs> he's know. like, I've had all right, well, that all right, well, I, While he's not here, did did, did uh? Uh, what's the guy's name? Troll shoes. Anyone? Did he remind anyone of Scope? Or is it just me? Wait, just what? me? Okay. Don't don't tell Scope. What? I didn't hear it, so I won't tell Scope. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds good. All right. Scope's here. I guess he'll show up once he like finishes microwaving a burrito or something. Fuck you. Okay. Uh -oh. Now he's back. <laughs> hey, Scope's here. Da. <laughs> he's also part Klingon. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> All right, guys. Uh, yes, welcome to a My Little Pony podcast that usually devolves into anything but My Little Pony. Um, so yeah, we, it's us. Alpha's out, most likely doing parenting things. You'll hear him later in the show, actually, to uh, to tell you that, um, because uh, we have a thirty-six minute interview that will be inserted into the podcast version of this uh, with um, with uh, Ingrid, who is the voice actor for mod uh, so you can listen to that uh, by the way I will tell you right off the bat that if you want to watch it we have the interview up in its entirety uncut undisturbed uh, over on at the Abronyville YouTube account so go find that if you want to actually see her because she's on all of her purple hair glory and you know she's she's super super awesome you audiophiles will definitely be able to hear her um, but you know the uh the, go go check it out. Go over there. We've got it's a, it's a good YouTube channel. Subscribe. You can subscribe. You can also get to see some of her tattoos that she showed off and everything. Saw her puppy. Yeah, her dog. It was scared because of like construction next door or something. Poor Doji. But yeah, uh, we are here today. We are going to do a episode. It's going to be a little bit shorter for those in the stream, uh, but definitely long for those that are that are going to be attending. Uh, to this, um, you know, podcast wise. So let's go ahead and move forward a little bit. Uh, let me go, go ahead and talk about our sponsors. Our sponsor that we're covering this month and going all the way up to the convention is Everfree Northwest. Uh, it is a convention up in ye old Seattle. Um, and uh, myself and Sandy will be present for this convention. So if you want to say hi, they're talking about having signatures. And, I, and I've been told by the signature staff that they would very much appreciate it if I only signed in my name. Um, <laughs> they were, when, when I told them that I would be completely willing to, sig to sign signatures and sign them in anybody else's name, they did want to reiterate that they did not want me to do that. They're no fun. I've, you know, I was trying to, I, I'm glad that we came to this agreement later. 
I was working on my Terra Strong, but you know, it's uh, it's it's just not gonna work out this year. So only signatures from Apple Cider. You know, Terra Strong comment. I love my tits. So do you. Oh, oh dear. It's gonna be cut out really quick. <laughs> um, how about how about you sign Apple Cider in parentheses, not Terra Strong. Okay, I think that's there acceptable. You, there you go. There you there, go. There's a, a compromise. Okay. I'm going to be a lawyer when I grow up. By the way, I'm trying to get back in Australia by saying, application error. Stream up is being updated. Uh, Try again in a few minutes. As said, people are doing the fightsies tonight and streaming that, and I'm sure yeah. it's, it's taking everything Fightsy down. Fightsy-whitesies. Yep. Two dudes are going to punch each other tonight. Woo. All the punching, yeah. Merriweather and that guy that I can't pronounce. Play Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Heck yeah. I don't See, know. she knows. I don't know. We, we've already established I'm the worst host at actually being able to talk. Yeah. Hey, words are hard. Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, but yeah, uh, so what you should do, go over to Everfree Northwest. Uh, go ahead and sign up. Come see us. Uh, I will be doing a, uh, a panel uh, for all of you role players out there that Scope says I should never, ever actually have agreed to. It's a terrible to. idea. It's a terrible idea, but I'm doing horrible. it anyway. Um, and myself, Sandy, full papers, and uh, one other. Uh, actually, let me see if I, well, I can't pull it up right now. Uh, we're going to be doing a headcanon panel, so please bring your very best headcanon so we can accept it or decline it. No, 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 it. no. Bring your so, worst headcanon. Uh, bring so every headcanon. Eating Chinese food is the best headcanon out there. And you and bring it up each week, and you got your picture for it, Scope. That was yes. amazing. I was surprised. Celestia loves her crappy Chinese food. And it yes. was, Go ahead. It was in, like, the top 200 of, uh, of Derpa Buru. Was it? Yeah. Oh shit! I need to look like that uh, up. the past three days. It was in the top two hundred. Oh, I gotta look that shit up. Yeah, it was. It was there. I was like, oh hey, it's that scope thing. Now to continue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can go check that out. But go to Everfree Northwest. Uh, go check it out. Get a uh, get a get a thing there. And as I said, all of our guests for this month are going to be individuals that you can go to Everfree Northwest, which includes Ingrid, the voice of Maud. She's going to be there, and she's awesome, and she's great. And you're going to hear her a little bit later in the show. But that is uh, that is it for that. Uh, Sandy has another convention he would like to talk about. Oh, uh -huh. yes, this is your what? point. Yes, this is my point. Yes, uh, Nightmare Nights Talus. It certainly is a thing, and it's coming up here in October. And uh, we've announced our first guest officially, uh, America Hendricks, voice of Sonata and Gilda and other such ponies. And I will give you guys a sneak peek as to our next guest. You know, you, you many, many listeners of this show find out our second guest of honor, as a secret to y'all, is none other than Jen Lake. Woo! Oh, I heard about that, yeah. Yeah. She is a pretty cool gal, is doing art for the comics, and seems to be a fun individual all around. She will be joining us this October in Dallas. You can go to our website, nightmarenights.net, and uh, buy yourself a ticket if you so are so inclined. Or you can wait till closer to the con, because it's not like we ever stop uh, pre-reg. Yep. I, I can't find it on Drippy for uh, Apple Cider. You have to give me a link. Okay, we'll, we'll find it. Hey. <laughs> crying um, but yeah go check it out that is uh, that is uh, hypernates.net yep that's my baby I'm gone which no one really cares but I'm gone yeah oh you you've been people have told us publicly you're the best reason the best thing on one this podcast. guy one crazy guy from Canada <laughs> so, uh, so are that's, we not supposed to trust Canadians now is that what hell is no okay Thirty Helens agree that I'm the worst part of Brody film. <laughs> Just gonna use that tenant in the rain from now on. <laughs> Man, I, I was that. Somebody mix. Huh? Sandy mute. Sa Sandy, your meal is too loud. <laughs> I don't think he can hear us. Uh, I think, he, which I is think fantastic. he gives a rat's ass. <laughs> I, I think he muted. One of those two, I'm not sure which. <laughs> he muted his his uh, his spaghetti sauce and pop rocks combo. So <laughs> that reminds me, five iron or on the on your wall, but is that all the stuff? It's very stuff healthy. I'll have you know. <laughs> Look, looking good. looking at the wall behind you, is that? Look at all the kids stuff. That's pretty neat. That's the, the that's the oh, new one. That's right. I'm on camera. Yeah. I'm like, wait good a job. minute. I'm I'm mixing up my food and. <laughs> I was, I was like, da, 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 da. 
I was too busy looking at the Batman and Captain America stuff on Five Irons Wall. Yeah. yeah on my wall, you did. can only see the uh, the sound dampening and my chair. That makes you look the most professional. I just got pony shit everywhere. So. <laughs> the sound dampening with the, 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 the four cubes. It's not like the entire thing is completely dampened. It's just those spots. It dampens the echoes. This room was really, really echoey when I first took it over, and that between that and the green screen cloth bisecting the room primarily, when most of the time it's off to the side today. Um, you first invaded. Well, I we had a roommate, and then we didn't have a roommate, and I took over the office or but took over just, the, the way you said took over. So you just invaded. It's like this is mine. Yes, this is mine now. When the cactus snake nation attacked. <laughs> so, do you know what has echoes? What? Ba bats? Bat ponies? Bat. Official ponies of Nightmare Nights Dallas. Bring yes. it all around. So, Sonar. <laughs> oh, 20 over 20 pounds of scree and key. Yep. All right. Well, let's oh. go ahead and move forward on this for our news. Let's uh, make sure, as always, we go ahead and keep you keyed in to the uh, Phantom Fire status, which is merely bad luck this week. Yeah. Yes. Just unlucky. Nothing, nothing particularly on fire, but just kind of unlucky. Just yeah, well, but the first couple stories are kind of sad. Well, that's yes. Everything's been unlucky and sad. So go ahead, go ahead, scope and give us all the horrible details of what's well, befallen us this week. Amy Keating Rogers has jumped from pony to mouse. No. She's now an official writer for Disney. Oh, she's gone to us forever. And she's only got like four scripts for this remaining for this season. Then it's probably done forever for Pony for her. And she's in the House of Mouse. Yep. Hey, if she writes for the Lion Guard, it'll all be good. Lion Guard? Yeah, yeah that's it's the, the uh, Lion King follow-up series. series. Yeah, what? it's coming out in this fall. It's a kid show. Didn't they try that once before? Yes. Well, that was Timon and Pumbaa. This is actually like this, another like another son of Simba and Nala. <sighs> yeah, like Pumbaa, brother. Wait, well, but cause... didn't they already do that, too? <clears throat> no, that was, that, 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 that was in a book. Okay, but, that was that was Copa, but, uh, Lion but, King: Six New Adventures. But what about Lion King Two, the one with the uh, with the That's second Kiara. scar and the and Kovu? The, yeah, and the thing and voiced by e Jason Marsden, Max from the Goofy movie. <laughs> I you know, I, I I know that it, it's kind of hypocritical for me to slag on another fandom while I'm on a pony podcast, Do but. It. I'm getting ready to. I'm trying not. I'm really you trying will not die. to. I am not afraid of any Lion King fandom. Bring it on, you. Oh, the Lion stop. King fandom has been around since before you would knew existence. Before even that, the Lion King. That is the, the, the Lion King existed. <laughs> not fandom existed before the internet existed. I'll have you know. <laughs> that is not accurate in this slightest. <laughs> I don't care. Um, the okay, King, well, uh, okay, the okay, public FAA internet. Has been on, the Lion King I, org I, used to be. I, I remember I, when it was back in Caltech. I hate to say it, but I'm going to invoke Kevin Smith. Didn't we say everything we needed to say in the Lion King itself? No. Archaeologists have found cave drawings. <laughs> that's a sound argument. From 20,000 years ago. <laughs> Actually, I'm I surrender gonna, the remainder of my time to the gentleman from Scope Stanistan. I've, I've got a, a video VHS somewhere of the animator's cut of Lion King 2. It's a whole lot better than what was officially released. Does I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's got a bunch of like storyboards that were never animated and adds a whole lot to the backstory. Like, Zira actually killed herself instead of just falling off. It was great. Suicide in the kids' film. You know what also fell off? The Lion King 2. <laughs> oh, the Lion King 2 is terrible. Oh, it's horrible. Lion King 1 and a half wasn't much better. It, it, it like, had its moments. It was like Aladdin 2. So, Aladdin, well, that's because Aladdin 2 was drawn by the TV animators. Aladdin 3 was okay? Well, Question that also had John Reese davies too, as Aladdin's father, so it was always good. Yeah. I and and Robin good. Williams was back as the genie. Right. Yes. Instead of Homer Simpson. <laughs> hey, the, the TV show was all right, but that was oh. also when Disney was like completely bastardizing everything forever with their like, oh crap, we got to sequelize all of our classic stuff from the '90s. That reminds me. I remember the episode of Hercules when there's the Hercules the Latin crossover episode. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Wait, what? Like, hey, look at that. We're contemporaries. And yeah, well, Ares and Jafar were working together because Jafar ended up in the underworld. <laughs> <laughs> So Jafar, when 
he he didn't go to like Ara Arabian hell. He went to Greek hell. Yeah, That's fantastic. Okay, now that okay, I retract some of my discontent toward Disney. I'd like to see that actually. It was because they were trying to get like Aladdin and Hercules to fight each other. It was pretty funny. Ooh, okay. What chance does Aladdin have? Why is that? Why? He's got a rug. Does he get like I don't know Hercules Her Hercule Herculean kryptonite? He's got genie. Fair point. Yeah, well, the in that episode, point. the only part of genie you see is this, is this fist coming out of the lamp as he punches the living daylights out of friggin' <laughs> out of the, the, the minions. Out of Bobcat Goldthwait. Well, well, let us hope that none of that befalls Amy Keating Rogers. She, she's yeah. written so many good things. Let's hope they don't go too cringy. <laughs> Mulan right. 3. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. God. Bambi <laughs> okay. 5. Alright, since we are... Good. I had a moment. I was like, Mulan three? Did they do a two? Of course they did a yes, two. They did a, yes, they did a two. Um, okay, so since we're down this path already, um, what was the purpose of Cinderella two and three and the one where they brought in time travel? Was that just to keep the copyright or <laughs> what? She had, I haven't even seen that. time I travel. She had Is another there artist. <laughs> there was a time travel in Cinderella. It was like like. A wish or something like that, and something is undone, and she's now back with her step godmother. Or You're something. thinking like, about Shrek three? No, no, no. No, this was no actually I'm pretty Cinderella. sure this was actually See? Cinderella. Shrek I don't know three. Why. It's not ogre. <laughs> <laughs> Bambi two was actually pretty cool because I had Patrick Stewart as the. King Stop of the saying world. words like that. <laughs> Bambi three. Bambi's revenge. <laughs> Bambi three venison time. <laughs> I just I don't know. I mean. And I'm not even a. I mean, I, animation is a is a. <laughs> I don't have anything nice to say. I'd have so nothing. So I'll let my shotgun to... do the talking. <laughs> <laughs> Bird. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Bamber, you can fly. Bird. <laughs> they call me Thumper, cause I love to thump. <laughs> <laughs> the Terminator soundtrack is on. <laughs> da -da, da -da, Let's hope da -da. none of this befalls Amy Keating Rogers. <laughs> this is some, this though. This is some great conversation. I'll have you know. Yep. Yeah, this has gone way too far, but absolutely. Fantastic. Anyway, I guess we should get back to ponies. Yeah, or well, what we could talk about. You want to know about something that came a far away from nothing? What? That'd be a shipment of Discord figurines. Oh yes, the oh. Discord Flutteron figures. All like the entire shipment, shipment was heavily damaged and therefore lost. I, I yeah. I'm impressed. You know, it, it's it's so delightfully bizarre that we're getting waifu figurines in 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 this day and age. We're getting waifu figurines for ponies, but holy crap, you know they are waifu figurine expensive. And now people put down $100 and they're not going to be done for another six to eight months. Holy crap. Well, that figurine was insane. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. It was really cool looking. Like no, it, just, I, it looked like it had so many points of just like, this could break here or here or here or anywhere. 1200 of $100 figures were created for, for pre-order and every single one of them was severely damaged. Did they explain how? I don't know. It's in it's in the article. Yeah, I didn't uh, read it. It's, it's, we love fine, so yeah. So I mean, the most the likely crap. thing is that they just got damaged in shipment, which you know, if you add to it that recently there's been a large backup in the ports, that some your the shipment could have gotten dropped. You know, your that, shipment of fail has arrived. Yeah, you're you're. It's. I think what we could all say is that the the figurine has Fluttershy and Discord, which means Disco Shy is officially oh. a broken ship. It's not any good. Oh, it's sunk. <laughs> anyway, and more bad news. It appears yeah. that Jan Animations will have to stop anything, all er, anything and everything pony related, forever. Basically, yeah. Comics, anything, just no more. Hmm. Yeah, basically, they got told to the nth degree that they really can't do this. They posted about it on their Tumblr, and uh, basically, like, yeah, we. We're thinking maybe Hasbro would roll with us, and they're not, so we're boned. Sorry, we're... our stuff looks so good. 
Yeah, it's like, sorry, I'm too damn skilled. Maybe you should, I don't know, hire me or something. Oh, yeah, but exactly. it was something like, like that. They're in Italy. Across the pond. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a shame. That really is. Because, you know, we were talking pre-show about uh, DBZ and how they use that one voice actor from DBZ Abridged yeah. as part of the game. And here we have someone crazy talented, you know, loved by the fandom for the most part. And now it's like, don't do anything or we'll sue you. It's like, hmm, contrast. Yeah. Probably because Vogel's no longer the VP of development because he said he was going to get on it and now he's working on the movie and writing for the show. That's a shame. We don't have any per Hasbro protection anymore. It's the nope. Wild West all over again. It's now Discovery Family. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, which I, there is one good thing about Discovery Family. It's, it, it says, coming up next, it's the first episode. It's just clips of the first episode. I haven't seen spoilers for any episode unless you look online. Yeah, they have not been releasing a ton of stuff. It's generally like uh, stuff, the cold open and the stuff immediately after the, the song, and that's it. You're not getting spoiled half the episode. Yeah, you also get a choice. You can go online and look. They don't, they're going to show it on TV. At least I haven't seen it. No. Well, you kind of have to have Discovery Family to begin with. Well, I mean just in general, because every, th every single thing is time to say, all new ponies, and it's just clips from the first episode. They're discovering the land of equality cutie marks. Yep. Again. Is on Discovery end. Family still showing that hand catfish hillbilly show? Catfish fisters? Probably. Something like that. Time yeah. to go noodling. That's yeah, that's the word. Great furry fanfic. No. Uh, no. Yeah. I don't know, ever since, ever since Mythbusters went all, hey, let's do a Star Wars myth for like ever. I'm just kind of like, Star Discovery Wars. I'm just like, yeah. well, why? What? Okay. So Can I'm, you deflect I, a blaster bolt with a lightsaber? <laughs> Difficulty. We have to have a lightsaber and a blaster. I don't have either. Well, I guess that debunked. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so grumpy tonight. I'm sorry, guys. Go ahead. All um, right. Well, how do you pronounce her last name? Bonnie Zachary? Is that how you pronounce it? Creatrix I think so. of ponies in general. Yeah, she, she's going to EQLA, Equestria LA. Interesting. Indeed. That's like, what, two cons now she's doing this year? Yeah. Well, I mean, she... You know, if it's to be believed, she wanted Pony to be in all all gender, both gender, everybody involved, you know, toy for everybody. Right. And so, I mean, this is sort of a weird modern iteration of that desire, the Brony community being like, yeah, it's for all ages. It's for children and creepy men and man children. And creepy neckbeards, yes. <laughs> we and picked I all of them out. <laughs> 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 this isn't a kid show. Yes, it is. No illusion. Yes. Uh, I mean, that's cool. Um, she's still oh, getting cool. recognized, and you know, it's she's just the, the show's been going on for what, like five years now, and now she's just starting to go to conventions. Hmm. Well, I I guess it was one of those things. Maybe she had to come comfort to, level. Yeah, comfort level. Come to terms with. You know, the nature of things, I couldn't tell you, honestly. It's cool I mean, that she is. I mean, you get her out of little warranted Virginia, which is like, 20, like 15, 20 miles south of here. So, so yeah, that's cool. I mean, and EQLA should be a good time. Yeah, yeah if I, think, I don't know, you get that whole drama going on now with like, there only needs to be one SoCal convention. Oh, that. Yeah, the four convention fight now. Uh, I'm completely ignorant to this. Do so you want to go into it and explain, or just uh, no? <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> just a mention of it. It's, okay, it's, good it's enough for me. It's more dumb. Just like no, there only deserves to be one, maybe two conventions no, in a state. Like not yes, all, Texas. Not every not every Brody can afford like do more than two cons a year. Well, in this particular case, it's basically in California's was uh, you know, you got the Bay Area. But then you have another one trying to set up shop in L.A. and then one in San Diego. Well, California is also like, you know, 80% of the West Coast. Yeah, it's kind of big. But, what are you going to do? I was in Portland? <laughs> uh, don't, don't give people any idea of scope. God damn it. <laughs> they already got one in Seattle. They should have one in Portland. Sacramento gets a oh, convention. We no, can call no. it That's po a Ponelandia. Ponelandia. There we go. Ponelandia. Uh, and then they can have Fred I, I Armisen and you know the Equestria. What's that bookstore in the show? 
Woman quills and, and sofas? Oh, wait. Quills and so yeah, quills and sofas is a friggin' bed pen. And no, it's, it's like woman and woman, I think. Yeah. Is. Uh, however, it's been I'm a while since I've seen Portlandia. Yeah, how yeah you, you can. So I've never seen it, but I just rec remember that one part and thinking, that's really weird. That's all, I know weird is that, all I know is that you can now pre order Rainbow Dash from the four Fourth Dimension Entertainment website. That's yeah. cool. I'll believe yeah. it when I see him. Yeah, I've already pre-ordered pre -ordered Flesh High Rarity. I just pre-ordered Rainbow Dash today. So. Oh, wait, you can pre-order Rarity? Shit. Yeah. I need to get on that. <laughs> See, that's the thing, though. They were supposed to have a whole crap load of stuff come out, like, last October before Nightmare Nights. They were supposed to have, like, the mini ones, too, the, the smaller ones. I remember hearing about that. And Never saw it. they're just gone. They, they haven't shown up. And so, I mean, they have some real supply chain issues. They make really cute plushies, but it's a matter of getting your damn hands on them. Twilight one is adorable as hell. It is. And, you know, they made them before she had wings, so you have a regular Twilight, not a princess Twilight. Yep. Who would want that? I don't know, but this convention isn't happening on the West Coast, but there is a new one happening in Chicago. Winnie City PodyCon. There sure is. Yeah. yeah same up against BabsCon. Uh, um, is it? What, I, didn't, I didn't really read it. I didn't read the whole thing, so let me. Um. So. Oh yeah, April first to the third. Yep, next year. And let me look at BabsCon. What is BabsCon's twenty sixteen? Oh, the High Regency. How about that? Oh, actually, no. It's three weeks before BabsCon. Oh, BabsCon is in March next year. It's uh, April 22nd, 24th. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, before, yeah, you said before now, your damn. Oh, 2016. So, okay, that's a little less egregious. And it's also, you know, totally different quadrants of the country, but still, yeah. it's like, uh. And I know a bunch of Chicago uh, Pony fans, so I'm sure that they'll all it's flock It's kind of a major metropolitan area. It's from the organizers of Ponyville Cider Fest and the members of the Windy City Brodies Group. I will have to say, I have some odd sen uh, odd issue with a pony whose cutie mark is a uh, a a, a, a uh, Chicago pizza. I don't know why. <laughs> I love Chicago I, pizza. It's I a mean, <laughs> dish. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Hold on, I haven't seen this. The the pony's cutie mark is a deep dish pizza. Yes. Yep. Click the link in the doc, dude. Just look at the. I'm look not the clicking character. nothing. You. <laughs> Jackass. Yes, not the boss of me. I'm gonna click it because I, I want to click learn it. A thing. Fine. I didn't learn nothing. You're not my real dad. <laughs> I don't think you are. Are you? <laughs> I would. Oh boy. I am from the south, you know. Oh no. Oh, no. I no. was born in Stanton, Virginia. <laughs> so my mom was no born in West pay. Virginia. No, it's got pay. Um. All right. I, I'm sorry. His rival needs to be a New York horse who has a New York style pizza cutie mark, and they need to fight. It's just a giant. His, his cutie mark his cutie marks kind of like Luna's it just kind of covers both sides of his butt except oh. it's a giant pizza well the thing is if you remember when Luna lost her cutie mark the splotches remain just the moon vanished oh so she has well she's a palomino yeah type yeah of well kind of like uh pipsqueak oh. pipsqueak or troubleshoes from today's episode well troubleshoes is a Clydesdale <laughs> through and through Meanwhile, back on that uh, on that pizza talk, you'd have the Chicago Pony and the New York Pony fighting while a real Italian just shakes their head. <laughs> Boobity bobbity. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> oh, that's racist. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's culturalist. It's Get culturalist. It right. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do this a little bit. Let's have some comic talk because I know okay. that myself as well as Sandy has read some comics recently. Mine was completely... Um, unintentional i actually had a friend over a little earlier and we were we were talking about the comics i was like so what's been good and they just went oh well the 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 character like the uh villain arcs have been going on and the somber comics really good and i'm like well let me see it i love some shattered a princess yep <laughs> dude yes. totally does that wow. was like whoa i did not expect that um i guess a little spoilery in, in this considering the fact we just said that um yeah, they came out five weeks ago. If you're not keeping up with them, I'm sure they'll probably put out an anthology yeah. set of them. But we're going to spoil the comics a bit. Yeah, the Sombra comic I, uh, was really good because it was both like, wow, I kind of feel for him. He kind of had kind of a crap, you know, and he had all this problems, all these problems. And then, you know, just kind of like, but he did kind of go crazy. 
can't feel he, all that. He went crazy and flat out murdered a princess. Yes. Well, he did say that uh, the pieces that she's not. Yeah, really they dead, put that just, in the comics because dispersed. they can't say, "Yeah, I killed her." He well, killed her. Well, yeah. just in the same way that that Sombra got straight up killed. Yes, disintegrated. <laughs> yeah. Except at the end of the comic, they're like, "Lol, he's not really dead." The long live the king. Yeah, his his little red horn decided to pop back down the stairs. Hello. It just took it a while to to make it down there. Like, hello, hey, miss me? <laughs> I'm still important. Yay! Uh, look at me, I'm a bad guy. I, I'm I'm evil. Yep. So, uh, so that's a that was a good one. Um, what uh, what other ones have you? I know that you've read the uh, the not so much loved Siren. One. Okay, so I have all five of them here in my hand. Ooh. Um, I, I basically, I went to my comic shop for Recomic comic book day today, picked up my box and I had some comics that I'd, I'd, I've been buying them, but I hadn't been reading them because I've been seeing them story timed on certain websites. So I'll read them and end up buying them and didn't read the physical copies. So I sat down with, I had 11 comics that I hadn't read, um, and just read them all. I actually made a comment that I have, I have 10 comics in front of me with Heather Breckle's name on them. She's pretty cool. Yeah, she's a pretty cool gal. Uh, colors comics and uh, does with everything. But yeah, Monster the uh, Hunter, yeah. yes, Chrysalis, the Chrysalis one, I liked a lot. Um, and that's a Cook Price gig, so the art's pretty good, and it talks about Chrysalis's very co various conquests. Um, though the point where uh, the whole like, what's the deal with the cheese legs? Is basically Celestia magic shotguns her in the face, buckshot, yep, and just tears her up, but doesn't kill her. And so all of the pony, all of the changelings have that now. So like, they can't heal, but they also don't reproduce. Like the changelings that are out there are it. Huh. Um. So it, I mean, the, the, it shows her with like the glowy eggs and the hive holes and whatever, but it doesn't. It doesn't really indicate that she can breed or have babies or anything else. But she also doesn't heal from getting holes blown in her body. Holding in the jokes. Holding in the jokes. Holding in the jokes. Um. So it, it kind of messes around with like people's fanon on that, but it's the comics. They're they're B canon at best. Um, until they address the stuff on the on the show, it's not real, man. That's just a conscious fan fiction. It's official fan fiction, man. <laughs> um, so that was really good. The one thing I like about the it, it's a little thing for me is that they make good use of the changeling commander, the the only the only armored changeling that's in the entire you know the hive. If you notice, she's there's always that one with the helmet and armor. Yes. There, plus, it was like the, he was the only one there, like at the the fight scene too. He's in the middle. He turned into fucking like Applejack or something. Hmm. Well, there That's was numerous me, armor changelings in the show in that I, episode. I only knew the one that had the helmet. Um, but like, yeah, Chrysalis takes out uh, Empire of Pegasi. She takes out a pompous unicorn. Uh. They, she kills a dragon. Throwing him in the volcano. Yeah. And it's like, what? He was fine. Probably. <laughs> this weird little lip bite, smiley grin. Yeah, it's not this big grin. Not gonna lie, I'm rereading the comic and the, the, where she sucks the love out. It's pretty friggin' creepy. Yeah, so, I mean, the changelings have, have, like, really wrecked some stuff. So they're and, they're definitely villain villains opposed to oh, like they are unre villains. they are un unrepentantly evil villains, and they don't care hmm. because as she put it, she's like you know I still have my people to concern myself with hmm. because she said you know she tells uh, Twilight that I put them into hibernation. 
All right. So, what about the uh, the other the remaining villains? Um, the Tyrek one is pretty cool, though. It kind of just it's set before he becomes powerful. Um, the big two page spread in the center of the comic looked kind of weird, though. I will say this is one of the com the best comics that Fleece has done. Mm -hmm. um, his art is shaky at best sometimes, but he did a good job with this one. Um, and it concerns itself with Tyrek and crazy evil centaur hermit dude who captures a equestrian unicorn way, way back in the day. Much to his father's chagrin who tries to, you know, get have better relations with equestrian. <laughs> He's like, oh, damn it. You, you, son, you messed up. Um, and the comic basically ends with him being grounded for life by his dad and oh. him vowing that he will soon one day be powerful. I th it's the middle one. Mm -hmm. It's it's still good. I liked it. Um the Luna one Heather knew for Tony Fleece art Heather Breckle coloring. Heard the story was weird. The story was weird and a bit dumb. Basically it ties this origin comic into the Nightmarity arc by basically showing what the whole the shadows on the moon that uh, basically captured Nightmare Rarity or made Rarity Nightmare Rarity on the moon. Basically, this is their origin. They are basically moon fairies that provided Equestria with dreams and Nightmare Moon corrupts the shit out of them and they become evil and celestia she basically uh nightmare moon tries to corrupt equestria through nightmares and putting it into ponies heads that celestia is evil basically undermining her through the ponies of equestria but there's a fight and nightmare moon tries to guilt her but in the end Nightmare Moon is still trapped on the moon, but all the poor little helper creatures have been corrupted into the shadowy goo beings that you saw in the comics way back in issues 5 through 9, or whatever it was. 4 through 8. <sighs> and then and the then, siren. Then the sirens. Jesus Christ. And see, Garbowska can do cute enough art, right? She did the Rarity and Bab Seed Friends Forever, which I thought was actually really cute. Um, but she also was responsible for the weird uh, Spike and Luna Friends Forever, where, like, oh yeah, there's this dragon colony that lives in Philadelphia, oh, and I'm going to just soapbox here for a little bit. Hope you don't mind. Um, so... You know, they're they're another one of those. Well, Karaska does the art, so I mean, it's it's inconsistent. Agnes Grabowska. and the whole conceit is just strange with the sirens. It's like sirens, these scary magical creatures that you know function like sirens, except in this one, they're just kind of floating around town, like literally floating around, and nobody bothers to give them a second look. You know, despite the fact that ponies have been shown to be a bit xenophobic to, you know, anybody that's not a pony, they're totally cool with a bunch of, you know, three candy-colored floating siren things with big toothy maws floating around and becoming Equestria idols. Like, the whole conceit of it is Equestria idol. And Star Swirl the Bearded being a sore ass loser who decides to make the siren somebody else's problem. They're too powerful for me, so forget them. We're going to put them at the worst place at all a literal hell. High school. <laughs> and they put them there for how long? A thousand years. Yeah, actually, it's funny because they pop in this basically like, like five minutes ago in the Equestria Girls. I, yeah, I, man, it's unfortunate. 
Oh well, uh, you should probably go check out the other ones because those all sound like that they're they're good good reads and good fun. Yeah, I so. mean, go, if you if you can pick up issue one, pick up issue two, pick up issue five, you could probably skip the loot in the Nightmare Moon, and you can skip the Sirens for sure. Um, I mean, there are still good comics like uh, the uh, Ever uh, Attack Revenge of the Revenge of Everfree. Uh, 27, 28. People kind of gave that one shit, but I thought it was alright. Um, so, I mean, it's just a matter of, like, holding the comic in your hands or reading it and being like, that was pretty good, or that was not. Uh, I, I think that, I mean, obviously, I like 60% of the comics in this run, so, I mean, that's not a passing grade, but still better than half. Um, I, I, there's not a ton of villains they could really do beyond this. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if this was, in fact, worth their while. Well, they could do Star Gleam. They could do Discord, which I have a feeling they're never going to touch because I think the show wants to hold on to that one. Yes. Um, um well, there was already a Friends Forever with the Key Mark Crusaders in Discord anyway. And, yeah, and then. Wasn't there, there was two of them where Discord featured, I thought. Hey, come on, Gilda is a, is a villain. I want to see the Gilda backstory. Let's do this. No one cares about her. Shut it! Your face. We're probably going to get her in the Griffin episode anyway. I, I doubt it. I would like to have her in the Griffin episode. That would be nice. We're probably not going to get it. But it would be nice. Either way. All right, well that's a comic talk. So at this particular point, it's going to be weird, and the uh, where you're probably going to hear a cutout or something. Five Iron may even put some form of small interlude in transition noise that would allow you to know that we're about to uh, we're about to uh, have a little bit of an interview go on here. Uh, this interview actually happened. Um, you know, a few days ago uh, on Tuesday uh, with Ingrid Nilsson, who was the uh, voice actor for Maud, as well as many other uh, th many other skills, yoga practitioner, burlesque dancer. We have, you know, we we had a really good time uh, talking with her, and she will, as we have stated, be at Everfree Northwest, so you can uh, go check her out. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's move on to that uh, quick little interview uh, with um, with Ingrid. Check this out. And a five, and a four, and a three, and a two, and a one. Thanks, Obama. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you, Scope. Yay. Yay, I guess we're back now. Uh, man, that was something, man. That was Alpha, great... Alpha, Alpha came in just for the interview. Absolutely. Jackass. Yeah, he just, Typical. Yeah, and then his kid had to take him away because of hitting, you know, hitting people with cars. Hitting hookers. Oh, boy. Yeah. So yeah, uh, hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, we've got something else uh, planned. Uh, let me go ahead while uh, while I have it on my mind. Let's go ahead. Uh, I just want to tell you what our uh, coming lineup for guests is going to be. Uh, since we are doing this uh, few weeks of Everfree, we've got two weeks lined up. Uh, next week is going to be uh, I lo love Kim Possible a lot. Uh, she's going to be in here to talk about her web series and us just goofing off with her. So that's going to be a, uh, a fun little thing. And then afterwards, well, let's see. We're all going to be equalized, I'm afraid. Exceptionalism Hello. is a lie. Yeah, we're going... You cannot have a nightmare if you never dream. Yeah, that's true, because Kelly Sheridan, the voice of Starlight Glimmer, is going to be on the show. Uh, so that's going to be... Uh, the ninth for uh, Kim Sparkles and the no nope, no nope, nope, sorry I keep KP. I get those meant sorry KP. K KP I'll get it right KP they both have Kim in their name it's so confusing uh, KP and then on the sixteenth Kelly Sheridan Kelly Sheridan actually will be live during our normal streaming time so as long as you know uh, everything's going fine uh, we'll actually have her on for a little chat and we can all talk about it. and she's done a ton of stuff too in Yuyasha X Men Barbie yeah uh, definitely a ton of bar everybody's done Barbie at this point I'm sure if I had well, to look around like, I've done Barbie I think she's like the main voice right. of Barbie too if I'm phrasing. Not Phrases. Yeah, what, have you, what are you doing? Where are you sticking that doll? That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, Ronma one half. So yeah, Kelly Sheridan. Uh, you can go check her. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be talking with Miss Equalization Pony in just a few weeks, and that's going to be a, a whole bunch of fun. Indeed. 
All right, uh, let's see. Well, moving on, let me go ahead and ask you and request our wonderful fans a quick, just a tiny little favor. We love you, and we love producing this show, and we do, we do everything that we do for freebies and for fun, but there's just two things. Well, let me make that three things I would like if you're able. This is fun? Now, this is fun. Fun? Oh. Fun? Oh, no. Okay. Fun? Okay. No. So there's three things. One, we've got the YouTube channel now, which you actually can see that video with Ingrid, which was really cool. And you can see her and she's smiling and waving and, you know, you can see the chat and everything is real fun. You can see this on fun? our YouTube channel. Far, far. I didn't know we even had a YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel. You can go huh. to like and subscribe. That's the thing you do, right, Sandy? You like no. and subscribe? Yes, okay. like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. That's an important thing to do. Uh, if you also like and you're listening to the podcast version of this, you can do that on iTunes and give us like five stars and that would be cool. That would be cool. And if you think that the stupid show is cool enough to like warrant maybe a little bit of, you know, material, monistic money help currency yes bronyshow.com bronyvillepodcast.com where you can find the show notes by the way for everything that we talk about on this show for every single episode uh over forever as long as that website never goes down uh you can find that over on the uh on the right hand side there's a donation area if you feel like giving us a few bucks uh just because you like the show or you think that scope sounds silly or something like that uh, you can go or ahead. Or do you do think it. I'm the mo the worst part about this show, which is actually quite well, true? Well, I mean, the twenty Helens. I mean, come on, thirty Helens. Thirty. Too, right? I don't know. I don't know your crazy thing. My crazy. That's Kids in the Hall. If you don't know Kids in the Hall, I'm sorry. I know some. I don't know all. Rock kids and roll. roll that was like died. late '80s. So. Continue. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's go ahead and move this towards the rapid close that is uh, that is approaching us. As, uh, well, as said, well, well, actually, we haven't talked about the episode that aired today. Oh, hey, we should probably talk about the episode. That's true. How uh, to say is that? Wait, we do go through all this in a Saturday night. Then the episode aired earlier, and we're just that. like <laughs> CMCs. Yeah, episodes, uh, CMCs, giant, right. giant ass horse. Holy crap! All right, I guess I should go ahead and full, pull up the Fem Wiki thing for that episode. I've, giant I've, clumsy horse at that. Yeah. Yes. Today's been a weird, uh, weird day since you wake up early to go see Avengers. It's thrown my entire like watching schedule off some. So I'm just like, oh yeah, oh this isn't the hiatus. We've got a horse to talk about. Well, there is a hiatus because there's no pony next Saturday. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, you're not. You're getting no horse next week. So next looks like they're showing G1 and G3 movies in the slot. Oh, so. oh, good. oh let's review it. those. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to sit through those. Screw you. All right, AC, we'll take one for the team. Oh man, if we could Ugh. find a place that shows what what's on it, we could do. Sure, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm not gonna say uh. I'm gonna take it with a smile. Nope. <laughs> All right, let me. Uh, oh, let me pull hey, up. the preview for the new Friends Forever with Diamond Tear and Silver Spoon is available. Ooh, yeah. By the way, was there any pony stuff for Free Comic Book Day? Nope. nope. Well, not that I saw. <clears> hmm. <throat> I'll see. I do have a, a one other announcement while I'm pulling up the information. I have one of the uh, Twilight Sparkle toys from uh, McDonald's. They live. They're a thing. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this week's episode. That's going to be Appaloosa's Most Wanted. That's going to be Season 5, Episode Number 6, Overall Episode Number 97, written by Dave Polsky. Uh, air date on the, on the 2nd of January, March, April, May 2015. Uh, and let's see, our storyboards was Christine Cunningham and Dave Weeby. Weib. However, and features characters is Trouble Shoes. Yes. Is this name like Trouble Shoes Clyde or something? That's yes. Because he's then a he... Clydesdale? Yes, his name's Clyde, but I guess Trouble Shoes is his nickname, I guess. perhaps. No, it just ha it has the Fem Wiki has it as Trouble Shoes. Oh, because I uh. think like, oh, there was like a previous show note or so, like a hint or something. It was Trouble Shoes Clyde, but I guess it could change. Yep, but, I don't know. but here you go. Here's your episode with Eeyore. Yeah, and well, he was voiced by Big Jim Miller too. Oh boy. Yep. Yeah. So somber himself back for oh. rodeos. <laughs> <laughs> I understood that reference. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, um, it was, you know, it was an okay episode, probably a 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10. I I think the average was about 6, 6 and a half. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a fine episode, it was, you know, kind of... It, it, last week was a really good episode, which he always makes an episode that's just not a not you know, that's pretty standard. Always feel like a little bit more of a kind of. But this was a Polsky episode, and it was pretty good for so, a Polsky episode. Everyone's you know everyone's favorite shipper, and that's Brayburn. Now, why do we say that Polsky's so bad? He's only made feeling Pinky Keen over a barrel, too many Pinky Pies, which some people in this crowd I know like. That was a Polsky episode? Yes. I like this dude. <laughs> uh, keep Calm and Flutter On. Games Ponies Play. Daring Don't. Rarity Takes Manhattan. Twilight Time for Whom the Sweetie Bell Tolls. Equestria Games. That's what it was. So Twilight Time. There's a f- let's, let's state that maybe one out of three is one that we kind of go like, Oh, that episode! Yeah! And the rest are just kind of like, Huh... Spike at your service, huh? That's the... Oh, God. Spike stay off. He's going to smell his feet. What? Yep. So, unfortunately, Polsky has gotten, you know, has had, uh, has, hasn't had had the best track record on, on the shows. But this was a good one. I mean, this, as we said, 6 out of 10. It did nothing to really, like, revolutionize everything. You got more Brayburn. There, you got what you want. You got more Brayburn. What else could you ask? Well, we got a good new character, an interesting character. I thought it was a giant um, character. It, it was Hodor, but he can talk. Yeah, it's like the giant from uh, from uh, you know, um, Princess uh, Princess. Oh, what was it? Uh, That's uh, Andre the Giant. Fezzik? Fezzik? Maybe he could have said, "Does anybody want a peanut?" It would have been great. That would oh. be a good line. <laughs> One thing I did notice that when it comes to you're obvious when it comes to these CMC episodes this year, you can definitely tell the girls are getting older. Yeah, the the squeak is is almost non existent. For Sweetie Belle, yeah. Well yeah. she has been at this for five years. Oh, I'm not yep. faulting her. But it's oh, just no, no, the it's... progression of progression of time. It's like yeah, I mean you can you can I mean, what are they now, like almost in their not quite twenty yet, eighteen, nineteen, somewhere in that range? I mean they're 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 getting old. And the same thing happened in Animaniacs with um uh the little, little squirrel's name Skippy. Mhm. Yeah, it's one of those things where I think what you're gonna have to do is I mean I think it's more of a, a question of time at this point that you're going to have to age up those characters, give them marks, age them up because we're not going to be able to sit here with you know, I, I guess you could. But well, they're they're kind of doing that because in this episode we saw Sweetie Belle like using her magic more than previous like she closed doors and picks things up which... yeah but if you, she, you notice there was like a, some some struggle at least because you saw yes. you saw the aura she, just kind of flicker though but she mm-hmm. actually used it though i mean yeah. that yes. was the it's not like oh you know i don't know if i can do this no she totally did it and uh you know like she picked up a barrel at yeah. the well end. she tried and it rolled away yeah but it's basically like hey look she's learning and maturing enough to actually have a little bit of control over her magic. And that thing weighs a ton. It, well, it sure as hell weighs more than her. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see if uh, see if we see any signs of um, you know, Apple Bloom's alchemy or whatever the heck Scootaloo was doing. Scootaloo's a tricycle? Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, uh, unicycle, I'm sorry. Good, she's going to end up being the you know, the... the the service pony. She's going to be the one that just, you know, oh, I got your car, you need fixing? Alright. Actually, when it comes to her ages, Madeline Peters is actually four years older than the other two, because she's 19. Claire and Michelle are uh, 15. Mm-hmm. So, uh, needless to say, <laughs> they really can't be the CMC for that much longer. There was someone had a good Good uh, idea, though, for the season finale. It's going to be the CMC trying to fend off Starlight Glimmer. It would it would be pretty neat if you had the CMCs stopping the one character that their her entire thing is cutie marks. Hmm. To steal cutie marks, anyway. It's like, well, there's nothing to steal. Send the Crusaders. <laughs> we have to send the three that are that are most likely to save themselves. No, that could be that could legitimately be a cool arc. 
if right. they did that. that. And yeah. then at the end, they get their marks, and we can move forward. Yeah, it's funny because my wife's been asking me because my wife is convinced that it's this season. It's going to happen this season. I'm like, I got no idea. Well, I have nothing. Well, if I knew that if we didn't know about season six, I I was always saying the moment we see the 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 CMC give the cutie marks, the show's over. No, we would have said that for Twilight becoming a princess and whoa. Well, that's what it originally originally was. <laughs> That, that was, was the end of the show. Yeah, because that was the 13 episodes just to get into syndication. It's over. <laughs> She's dead. <laughs> it's all going to be okay. Oh, boy. Everything's going to be. And then she gets sucked into a jet engine as it's flying by. <laughs> she wasn't very good at flying. Thanks, M.A. Larson. Uh, all right. So, what, are we, what specifics do we want to talk about this episode? I, I don't want to do like a breakdown every single beat. Um, Braver um, was hurt. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of background ponies with more it's with more hats and team than fucking Team Fortress 2. Not possible. Yes. <laughs> they had more hats than God. But there were there were a fair amount of hats. It was I I was I noticed like, oh hats, here we go. More hats than a hipster in San Francisco. Yep. Uh they, they have been doing really well with the with the background pony treatment. I mean, um Sheriff Silverstar was like got considerable amount of screen time yeah. and a couple of neat looking deputies mm -hmm. yeah that's what what i noticed is that, like they took like the the amount of typical country and like ratcheted it up about four or five four or five notches well it's a rural earth pony town that's where sandy comes from you know exactly it's you know mainly earth ponies and there's that one pegasi cowgirl cow pony you know, she's she's the weird outsider, but everyone accepts her because you know she, can she fly. has to judge. Uh, yeah, she has to judge something. <laughs> she's got to use. She's got to use in this town. She's she's got to find some racism somewhere. It, it's really funny though, because you when the Western you me hear you would typically hear like "God damn it," but you hear them like really just do the curses in the in the nice subtle way that it's uh, that's still Western. Polite profanity. Yeah. It's country profanity. <laughs> Dag damn it. Excuse me while I curse over here. Uh, Dag damn it, son of a monkey. So there was one thing that I needed to uh, to double check about this, and I guess it does technically work. I was looking so there's the weirdness of the fact that they walk out of Appaloosa into what appears to be Everfree. Well, it just so happens looking at the map that that is technically what could have happened. Uh, uh, in the official show map. Appaloosa does touch Everfree, so it's just on like the south edge. Yeah, well, it's actually on the north. So Appaloosa is south of Ponyville, and between the two of them is actually Everfree. So, huh? Well, also, if you look at remember Pinky Pride, there's a bunch of just tea sandwiches all over the place too. Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, just, I like that we have this map to check on, and we need to make sure it's accurate. Exactly. I love. That the, non canonical. Um, non -canonical. Non -canonical. <laughs> well, can you well compare it to the t the tree chest castle map and see if it's actually you know accurate? Well, that's not. what I'm saying. I, I like that that we check this map, and I'm pretty sure someone in the office of DHX is going. Hold on, wait a minute. Okay, <laughs> we're on. good. Those, that's more we're both good. than good. Dodge Junction. <laughs> those paranoid jerks are going to have to figure They're out. Gonna, God, they won't shut up. <laughs> Technically, I don't see how they could have been walking in that forest. <laughs> I don't see where the train track goes yet far. Of course, the first, when that train backs up in the first episode, it was great. Of course, we had to figure out where the heck that was. Perhaps in the near the San Palomino Desert? We'll have to just find out. Well, well she did say the staff is famous. The a, yeah. And by the way, I just noticed Las Pegasus is on the map, so. Yep. Oh, boy. Is it burning? <laughs> Uh, there are there are clouds appear to be above it, so it should be smoldering. <laughs> still, still today. And the, and, and, and they're you still hear, on fire to this day. If you it's... if you drive down the halls of uh, the Riviera, you can hear the sound of a jazzy scooter <laughs> drawing low on battery. <laughs> Oh boy! Um, anything else about the episode? We talked about the CMCs getting. Um, Oh, oh, I do have to make this point. Remember how a while back we had that episode where um, where Applejack uh, won all those ribbons but never won a top prize? Yeah, I yeah. was wondering about that. That's a kind of, that's, that's what 
That was my brain went, hold on. And, then, gotta... <laughs> and Applejack wins the top prize, and everybody goes, huh, whatever. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and makes... Look at this big trophy or big sister one. She's like, okay, yeah, that's cool. And and just she looks, like, really mad at that. It's like, damn, kids, I should have left you back at Ponyville. When did you start liking a rodeo clown so much? You know, I, that, that, uh, that stuck in my mind when I was watching it. I forgot till just now when you mentioned it. That was the thing. They, I thought that they were showing in, what was that last roundup? Was that that episode? Yeah. When she's, where it shows her. Show. Yeah. Well, where she's, uh, she's going and she like uh, clips the top of that 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 one jump with her hoof, and I'm like, okay, she's getting old. Is she slowing down a little bit, losing her edge? I get that. You know, life happens. And it's kind of like, either did she step it back up, or did they just completely forget that? Well, you know, she's probably been training. And mm-hmm. she also casually mentions that, you know, all those other rodeos near Ponyville have shut down because it's kind of implied that she's going in and cleaning up. That mm-hmm. reminds speaking of the map, I'm looking at it now. Well, the Las Pegasus is actually around Applewood, so that's more like Los Angeles than Las Vegas. Technically, but the name is still Las Pegasus. Yeah, with well, the LAS, but it's on the but it's on the shoreline of the Pacific Coast. So that's uh, actually Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> Technically, this cannon is blah blah blah. And looking at the map for Appaloosa and Ever- Everfree, that's a long distance to go to get in the Everfree from Appaloosa. It's, it's still technically close enough. Like and you could, you could have, distance. you could have it in that green area. Blah blah. Look, this is what happens when nerds fight. They would have he- gone more in the Ghastly Gorge than they would. I can been. hear the podcast listeners rolling their eyes. Look, jackass, this is how it is. <laughs> and they're fight. Never, they would have never walked that far. Arr. Well, the, the Whitetail Woods is a lot further away from Ponyville than I thought it was. Well, you know, the, the, the alternative is they were just wandering around the apple trees in Appaloosa, and that's not going to be the case, because those weren't apple trees. And, no, they, they, and they weren't in the Badlands, and they weren't in Dodge Junction, so I'm just trying to make this work. They weren't in the Macintosh Hills, either. Yes. Because Macintosh wasn't there, or the Hayseed Swamps. All right, we're go- we're getting off topic. Uh, is there anything else in this episode of note? Just the giant horse that's like that dwarf Celestian Luna. Yes, he was enormous. <laughs> um, I like that sketch I posted to Twitter. It's like, oh, hey, Clyde, this is Big Mac. Big. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and like Big Mac just staring up at him. He's his head is at like chest level. What I didn't see that drawing. I need to, was it on your Twitter? Yeah, I posted it. Okay, I'll look. Chef Sandy is the Twitter feed. Yes. Um, there was uh, there was some other fan and stuff that happened around it. Some people have already started to ship um, the ship derby. derby with uh, trouble shoes. With trouble shoes, yeah. So Denny Butt did a really cute piece. It's like Derby zapped herself on a cloud and it's raining on trouble shoes and he's looking sad. <laughs> I really liked any of style. I like their art a lot. Women lying in pods distributing swords. 2K16. Yep. Let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else of note in this episode, but you know, it was just, it was kind of just like, yes, let's see where we're going. Okay. That's you cool. You sure are a big fella. For you. Yep. That's, that's disgusting. Him breaking all the mattresses. If I took oh. your hat off, would you die? <laughs> Very uncomfortable. Uh, all right. Well, let's go ahead and move forward. We've already talked about all this stuff, so I guess we do one cool thing now. Yes. We are right. incredibly silly but let, us, but let us remind you first, no episode next week. Ah. No pony show. Right. But we will be doing a we podcast. We will be doing an episode. We'll be talking but we won't about. have anything to talk about. Well, I guess me and Sandy will. Or we'll just watch Rainbow Rocks again and I'll go like, man, Sunset Shimmer sure is cool. Got the music in our hearts. Uh, uh, right. Content ID, content ID. <laughs> Together uh, we will never uh, be afraid of the dark. Don't worry, I think his voice is, is different it, it's, enough. Yeah, he's not quite... Um... You're to sing our song out Whoa. now. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Hi, Dr. Oh. Claw. How are you? Dancing with the crowd. <laughs> no me gusta. That's my mal. Oh, it's Diablo. Gadgets. Oh, boy. Uh, all right, but just to remind you, the next episode is uh, 
the one that you're going to get on the 16th is going yeah. to be Make New Friends But Keep Discord by Natasha get, Levenger. We're, we're for, fl for Fluttershy Friends on Discord, and it really makes him mad. Oh, boy. But who is she going to take to the Grand Galloping Gala? But Milady. <laughs> It's she's gonna take Maud. She's gonna take Maud. That's true. There is that. Where's the There's card? There's that card. The, yeah. you know, the, the spoiler. Fedora shy. All right. Well, let's she go sure ahead. is popular with the ladies. Hey, sure yep. is. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move forward for one cool thing. This is where, at the end of the episode, we tell you about something that we think is cool, pony or not pony related. Uh, we're going to remind you, Ingrid's, which was Project True, which you can find the link for Project True, as well as she wanted to mention that you can donate there as well if you like to. Um, the donations are on the website as well. Uh, and that is, let me scroll down. Don't down. forget her other website, the Tempest Jade Yoga. Ah, uh, yes, Tempest Jade Yoga and Project True.com, uh, both of those .com, actually. Uh, so you can go check out those particular links. Um, I am going to bring up uh, a crazy movie theater uh, that I ended up going to this week to watch some stuff. And it's the new Parkway Theater. Uh, hey, listen, if Scope can talk about a, a meat market he goes to, I can talk about it. fantastic. I can talk about an awesome theater, which is the new Parkway Theater in Oakland, uh, where you can sit on couches, drink beer, and watch a movie. Oakland? Oakland is a crap. Uh, crap. there's... Okay. There are definitely... Yes, it is a pretty... It can be kind of sketch, but it's a one... It can be a bit rough. Yeah. Uh, uh, but there yeah. is... Um, but there definitely is some fun things. This was a nice place. Nice, big, comfortable... Lot, like as I said, there were couches and just like you know, some of your non-standard seating. Um, they had food that they would straight up deliver to you, as well as some good craft that, beer. That's like the Alamo Draft House. Yes, yeah, so it's akin to it. We don't have yeah. Alamo Draft Houses out here for some reason. So. There aren't any couches, oh. but they do have the whole order from your movies, your seat. Yeah. Theater. Wait, you forgot the Alamo? No, I was. I, I, <laughs> There's no basement at the Alamo. Scope mentioned. Alamo Draft House, Draft House Brewery, Brewery. Oh, new brewery opened. I need to append an extra thing to my uh, oh, God, uh, I, one cool I thing. I still have this damn icon as my sky <laughs> I and, need to change it back. And, and I guess another cool thing I could add is the fact I'm going to Texas in a few a few weeks. I get to yes. I, I get to high five with uh with um Sandy a few times and get to enjoy the temptress. Go back to hard eight. Yep. I might. I, I've got co-workers I'm going to be tending to, but I will sneak a, sneak my way around a little bit. I still have to laugh, because that place changed full papers forever. It changed a lot of people forever. Yeah, I it can't stop It opened your eyes. It's, you saw the truth. It's one of those few places that you take someone to, and then they just understand. It's like the time I took uh, Silver Eagle to a uh, Tim Hortons. Like he he's a changed man. Like he 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 gets it. He gets what Tim Hortons is. Well, if you come out here, I'll take you to Two Fat Butchers, and you'll see what I've been talking about. All the meat. We'll, we'll yeah, we'll just buy all the meat and take it back to my house and cook it. All right. Well, you can do that. But go check out the. I have a link for the new Parkway Theater. You can go catch movies. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be there just momentarily. Okay, because I see the text. I don't see the link. Yeah, it's, it's coming. Hold on. Don't, uh, don't, don't be. I can't wait. But uh, then you can you can go watch a movie. They're doing they do playoffs. They do uh, they had have a mystery science theater night. They have a big Lebowski night. It's oh, fun. That reminds me of the Alamo Draft House. They have spaghetti western nights, right? Where they play like well spaghetti westerns, and you can get like all you can eat spaghetti. Nice. I like that. There's also like Saturday morning cartoons where you can just yes. come in like watch X Men like have Saturday cereal morning shit. cereal parties. Those are great. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really fun. And the quote alongs are really funny too. All right. Yeah, when they did the gym one, uh, the one for the classic gym, they had the actual voice actress who did gym come in and give a little talk after we aired the episodes. It was uh, cool. When, when I went to, see, I actually went to see the Blues Brothers at the local Alamo, and everyone came basically dressed up. It was like going to a friggin' cosplay convention too, and it was just so fun watching on the big screen again. So they, you've got Alamo Draft Houses <clears> up near you now. Yeah, there's a uh, yeah, the, there's one up in Loudon, uh, Loudon County. No, oh, well that's cool. Oh yeah, no, I, I love it. They're out out of here in Texas, 
And it was a big deal when they opened their, the one in Richardson, which is the closest one to me. All yeah, right, cool. one of these is like a half hour, 45 minutes up the road. Yeah. Neat. I will state that with the new Parkway Theater, I'm kind of quasi trying to have an event run there. Um, but we'll we'll see how a pony event run there, but we'll see how that works out. There's a lot of money that has to happen to make that you know, actually occur. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, we have no alpha this week. So, Chef, you've got two links here. I've got two links because I am a total nerd. All right. So, the first thing is Ultimate Fight Final Fantasy XIV. It was a video that uh, the Square Enix put together a mock up of a fighting game in the Final Fantasy XIV Heavensward engine. They're doing some engine upgrades and whatnot, similar to how. You know, things got prettied up between, you know, WoW expansions and whatever. And they did a pretty cool-looking fan service faux fighting game. That at the very end, they're like, look, we're not actually going to do this. Um, but it looks cool, right? Um, so that's a cool little, like, gift to the fans that they did. Um, it's like, this is like their fan festival they had in Japan last, like, last week. Uh, so it's really cool. And my second thing is Bitter Sisters Brewery. Um, it is literally half a mile from my house. If you, I walk to it. You could walk to it, drink, and then walk home. And stagger home. Um, they got... they Right now they're doing four different brews. Um, and two of them sound pretty good to me. But I just think it's... I'm just... Tickle pink that there's there's a brewery half a mile from my house now that if I want to I can go and drink and for some reason the website is not wanting to work for me oh, there no. we go it's like stream up I killed it um, so they there is called bitter sisters they have busybody and their website like crashed all right it's a uh, blonde logger I'm kind of on that but they and they have catfight which is their IPA um it's 6.66 ABV. Ooh, or spooky. Satan. They have a knockout, which is a Irish red ale, which sounds pretty good. It's 8.1. Um, and the other one they had that sounds good is their Hissy Fit, which is a 5.78 Mars and Lager. Hmm. So, well, have to try those out. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're right down the street from me. I, we can check them out depending on when they do their like tours or if you can go in and order some of their beers directly from them cuz unfortunately you're not going to be in town on a saturday i shan't and, and they only do the brewery tours for uh at lakewood between noon and 3 on saturdays mm -hmm. it's totally worth the 10 bucks if you can get out to it but it's not going to be something you and i can go do yeah not right now that's fine uh, let's see, Scope uh, has another IFL science uh, link here. Yep, scientists of <clears throat> they're observing their, you know, little backstory here. When it comes to galaxies, a lot of them have supermassive black holes at the core. Like the Milky Way here has a black hole at its core. Well, two galaxies are merging, and the scientists at the University of Maryland are, are observing two supermassive black holes about to collide with each other. That sounds bad. They're no, going to divide by zero. It oh. basically just creates a larger black hole. But the thing is, this galaxy has become a quasar, which is active galactic nuclei. It's it's a, basically it's a really bright galaxy, billions of light years away. Man, we're gonna have to be careful about this in ten to twenty thousand years. Let's go. Yeah. Say say billions and billions. Billions of miles away. <laughs> Oh, you didn't get the reference. Go ahead. Billions nope. and billions. Billions and billions. Of oh, there you, was, was, there you I go. Was, I was Smoke of weed Uba. every day. Smoke <laughs> weed every day. I always thought there were balls of gas burning billions of oh, miles see, It comes back away. to the Lion King again. It always yeah. does. It's always about... These shows are cyclical. Yep. All right, Five Iron, what about you? Oh. Uh, good Lord. Uh, it's a no. lion. Oh, it's a lion. Yeah, the actual <laughs> lyrics. The songs are really dumb. Yeah. Table flip. All the money. Um, okay, so I am still on an Avengers kick right now because I saw Ultron the other day. I really enjoyed it. But I'm not going to spoil anything. So what I have for you is one of my favorite YouTube channels is CinemaSins. And they do the Everything Wrong With series. You may have seen the Everything Wrong With 
Pony series parodying that. Um, and I have everything wrong with The Incredible Hulk. Uh, so go watch that and have fun. I have not actually seen that movie. Oh, hey, the Bronyo Stream is currently offline. That's yeah, me. that's been pretty much like that. It's because of them fights. <laughs> I mean, this friendship the fight. Get, f- friendship gets in fights this week. Friggin', so. friggin' Mary well, he just beats the shit out of his wives anyway. Whoa! 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 Whoa hi, yes. Scott! Oh, no oh there he is. Where have you been all episode? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> all right, so you can check You know what? I, I th- Maybe this is weird. But it's kind of like oh, that's, uh, having the uh, the everything wrong with the Incredible Hulk and everything wrong with My Little Pony. Is it bad? I want is is it weird that I want a bla- bad lip reading for Pony? What do you mean? They, they, I know what you mean. Yeah, the bad yeah the bad it, lip reading series. I don't know if that would work too well considering oh. they're just like little mouth flaps. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You could always do like the J Job Orchestra does with Star Trek. Yeah, you could. God, I love those so much. Fish beat. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, everything wrong with the Incredible Hulk. Go check that out. And that's going to take us to the end of this episode. That's going to be episode 173 this week, kiddos. Yay! Good to see Fo- Alpha pop in for like 30 minutes to talk to Ingrid. And to- yeah. yeah, but then his wife probably killed him because his kid was like, I want to play GTA 5. And she didn't know. Ugh, that was that's so Child. awkward. CPS RIP. showed up. It was it was a real dark time. <laughs> well, you can't even let your kids walk down the street nowadays without CPS just rolling in. And your kid walked in the woods. Oh my god! You you well, let, we saw it on My Little Pony. You the monster. I know. You let these children walk around outside without adult supervision. Unheard of. Well, <laughs> I guess they did sneak away from Brayburn, so. Well, he was asleep because he's a jackass. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's another one. There, Head bye. down. Blank up. And that'll do it. That'll take care of us for episode 173. We'll be back next week with I Love Kim Possible a lot. Uh, KP, as she's oh, now. my leg it hurts so bad. Uh, we'll catch you all next week. Till then, sleep well, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Obama. Adios. Good night, everybody. I hate turtles. Hit the button. It's a tortoise. No! Ah! Do I look angry? Button has been hit. All right.